Praise the Lord, everyone. Can we stand to our feet this morning and give God praise? I don't know about you, but I want to create an atmosphere that God can move. And we can do that when we lift the name of God up in our praise. with singing. Come on, how many came to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Why don't we do that right now? Come on, why don't you lift up your hands, lift up your voice? Why don't you clap unto him? Give him the glory that's due unto his name. Come on, he's blessed us enough. Why don't we begin to bless his name and magnify him? Did you come to praise him today? Did you come to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise? I don't know about you, but I have my mind made up from the moment I come into the house of God, that I have come to be a worshiper, I've come to be a praiser, I've come to give him thanksgiving. Why? Because he's been good to me. And I'm coming to his house, and I'm his guest, and so I'm going to do everything I can to make sure he knows that he's a good God, and he's been good to me. Praise the name of the Lord. 
The Bible says, um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I can't think of a better way to rejoice and spend my day than to do it in the house of God. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may be seated. We welcome you to the house of God this morning. It's, it's good to see each and every one of you at church this morning. We're also extra thankful for every guest that are that is here with us today. This is your first time. We are we really do thank you and we are honored that you chose to be here. We pray that everyone had a, a happy and a, a safe Thanksgiving. How many had a great Thanksgiving? How many ate too much? I, I hope you had a great time spending it with, with family and friends and I hope you didn't eat too much, but I, I know I went to the gym on Friday and it was packed. So uh, I, th I think everybody was trying to work off those extra plates and maybe I was one of them too. So maybe I'm just the kettle calling the, the pot black. But um, I, I pray that everybody had a great time and we want to remind everybody uh, that our tithing and our offering boxes are located at the back of the sanctuary. You can give it any time in the service. You can also give online through our, our church app and we want to thank you in advance. And I always tell you thank you for, for your giving because you are a giving church. You have a giving spirit. And uh, we just know that God is going to bless you because of that. And um, he, he, I know he's blessed me. And, and I know he's going to continue to bless this church for, for having a giving heart. Uh, we'll be having a baptism today. And I thought I would get a couple more hand claps than that. <laughs> Somebody's going to go down in the water and have their, their sins remitted and take on the name of Jesus, and that is an exciting thing for any church, and uh, I know we had a baptism last Sunday, and um, if you have never been baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus, I, I wouldn't leave out of here today without taking on the name of Jesus. You, you can't get to heaven without it. I, I don't care what some people tell you. You cannot get to heaven without being born of the water and being born of the spirit. And it has to be done in the name of Jesus because there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so you can go down in the water today and have your sins remitted and stand before God as a righteous person. Amen. Let the church say amen. Uh, tonight, we will be having a church service at 6 p.m. We will be having a, a missionary to Haiti joining us. Him and his family will be Brother Josh Tingley and his family. And so we're asking everybody to join us and welcoming him and, and supporting him. You know, the Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And I know that there's many in here, at least I know I'm one of them, that can't just up and move to a foreign country. Um, but we can encourage them and support the ones that do. And uh, that's what we'll be doing tonight. So please come out and, and join us. But make no mistake about it, we will be having church. We will be expecting a move of God, expecting the Holy Ghost to pour out. We expect miracles, signs, and wonders. Come on, how, ma how many came to have church this morning? How many want God to move on you right now? How many need God to touch you right now? Or maybe you came in this morning with a situation you need God just to, to step into. I'm telling you, he can do it. He can do it. Psalms 8 and 2 says, Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Some translations say it says that it gives you strength against your enemies and it steals the enemy and halts the avenger. That word steal is the same word for Sabbath, meaning to see. So in other words, praise brings an end to the purpose of the enemy. And it causes him to cease from his designs. You want to know why when we come into the house of God, we lift up our hands, why we shout and why we magnify, why we run and why we dance. It's, it's really very simple. The Bible makes it clear that it's a way to foil the plans of the devil. It's a way to disrupt and even halt every scheme that he has against you and every attack that he has that's coming against your family. It's as simple as opening up your mouth, lifting up your hands, and beginning to worship God and give him praise. That's how you get your victory and that's where you'll get your answer oh come on I thought I was in an apostolic church this morning 
I'm talking to somebody this morning who maybe came in wondering why it seems like the enemy is always winning and why it seems like it's just attack after attack after attack and it seems like you're maybe always feeling like you're not winning the battle. I simply ask you this morning, where are you with your praise? Where are you with your worship? Because I'm telling you, the devil doesn't know how to respond to a worshiper. It confuses him when a person will say, you know what? I may be going through a trial, but I'm going to praise God anyway. I may not I know how I'm going to make it through, but one thing for sure, I'm going to praise God until I do. Come on, somebody. We already sang one song, and maybe we already had one time of worship, and you might have already missed an opportunity to get your victory, but as we go back into a time of worship and praise, I wonder if we can stand in the house of God, and somebody will make up their minds that I'm going to be a worshiper this morning, and I'm going to praise God. I'm going to disrupt the plans of the enemy, and I'm going to cause him to come to a complete and full stop just simply by raising my hands and, and praising him and I'm telling you this morning there is power in your worship when your praise stop his plan stops when you open your mouth you shut the mouth of the devil come on does anybody want to foil the plans of the enemy and begin to lift up the mighty name of Jesus this morning and be a worshiper in the house today
times that Jesus moved, whether it was him healing, performing a miracle, there was always a response from the one that received, always. At least when I read the word, I have yet to find a place where someone received something from God by not responding to him. Now, I don't know where we've gotten off in, in Christendom. Maybe it's your tradition. Maybe it's your background. Maybe it's the times we live in. Maybe it's the stress and the chaos of life. It's harder today. Uh, maybe your morning was crazy. I don't know. But I don't know where we have started equating God doing something without our participation. Where, where God moves simply because we think He can. There is always a response to God that attracts Him. And that's why it's so important for you that no matter where you are and the enemy's fighting you, do not let him get you bound up so much that you cannot respond to God. Listen, it don't take a whole lot, but it does take something. 
it doesn't mean you got to run the aisles, but there has to be a response to him. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. He, he said, if you seek me, I will be found. In other words, he's saying a response matters. And what you do in response to the presence of God is the determining factor. Hear me this morning. It is the determining factor of what you receive from God. Amen. It is the determining factor. Hallelujah. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, I want you to raise your hands right now, would you, all across this place. Come on. You, you, Brother Winslow's trying, no, Brother Winslow's not trying to get you to do anything. What I'm asking us to do in this house is to simply say, if I want a response from heaven, then heaven needs a response from me. Would you do that right now? You could just lift up your hands. You could, you could just close your eyes and, and just begin to say, okay, God, I love you. I need you. Come on. Heaven is listening for a response from you, and your response is going to pull down what you need. Once again, let's lift him up in this house. Come on, right where you are. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I magnify you, Jesus. I worship you. I love you, Lord. Although my response isn't worthy enough for who you are, I'm going to give it to you anyways. Although my praise is not adequate for a God like you, I'm still going to praise you. I know that what I offer you upon the altar of my life is nothing in comparison to the greatness, to the goodness, to the mightiness, to the bigness, to the grandioseness of you. But God, I give it to you anyways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you clap your hands under the Lord? Amen. What that means is if you need a miracle, begin to worship Him. I will tell you, I've never seen someone get a miracle that wasn't worshiping. Well, hallelujah. Welcome to Sunday morning. You say, but that's not what I do. I, listen, worship, worship's not, not normal for any of us. Our flesh don't want to do it. But if you'll just understand that he is so worthy of praise... And there's just something about, look, you ain't got to get out of an aisle. and run. We're, not, we're not talking about that. But I'm asking you right where you are, when, you, when you're battling and you're going through things, learn to worship Him. Learn to worship Him. Learn, learn how to, to, I don't know what to say, then get in the Bible and find all the words that describe Him. And just begin to say, you are great. You are magnificent. You are lovely. You are beautiful. I adore you. Begin to tell him how much you love him. And then when you do that, something begins to shift and it attracts him. I'm going to say something to us. God is not attracted to our pain. He's not attracted to your troubles. He's attracted to your faith and your worship. It attracts him. Hallelujah. You'd be surprised what would happen if right there in the middle of all of the stuff, you just began to say, I love you, Jesus. I love you and I worship you. Amen. You would be surprised what God would do. Amen. Would you give God a great hand clap of praise? Thank you, praise team. Woo, man, I tell you what. That worship and that singing was powerful, wasn't it? I tell you what, our, our praise team, they just... Every week, they just bring us into the very throne room of God, and we feel His presence, and I am so appreciative of that. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Judges chapter 14, verse number 5. Judges chapter 14, verse number 5. If I can get a little bit more monitor on the platform. Amen. Judges 14, verse number 5. While we're turning there, let me just say to everyone, amen, please uh, uh, keep Sister True Love in your prayers. Amen. If you, if the Lord impresses upon your heart uh, and you feel like calling and reaching out to them, even if you get an answer machine, leave a message. Amen. I know that she would appreciate that. 
Amen. Um, I just feel, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. How about you? Amen. Aren't you glad you go to a church where the presence of the Lord moves? Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Um, I just want to say to this church, when you, when you are, when you feel an impression of the Holy Ghost, when, when the Lord speaks to you and you feel like calling somebody, do it. Amen. I just want, I know this church knows this, but just in case you don't. Amen. If you ever feel impressed of the Lord, you pick that phone up. You say, well, I'm not a part of the, 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 the ministry team. I'm not a part of this. I, it doesn't matter. You're part of the body of Christ. And that, to me, is the greatest team to be upon right there. Amen. Come on, somebody. You don't have to be on the platform. You don't have to be on the ministry team. You don't have to be a part of the Sunday school department, the youth department, next-gen department, our greeters, hosts. You don't have to be a part of any of those ministries to be able to love somebody. And uh, if the Lord just leans on your heart and says, man, I want to just find out how so-and-so is doing, I'm going to tell you what, you do it, you reach out, you call them, you let them know. Hey, man, you just keep calling until they tell you, please don't call no more. Amen. And uh, I know it will be a blessing. And I just want to say thank you to all of our church who has been doing that. You've been, you've been calling all of the various people in our church that have been going through things and a lot of sickness going around. A lot of folks sick. And um, with different things, a common cold. I don't know why we call it a common cold. It's not very common. And, uh, but just the cold and flu and COVID is still hanging around. And just and then we've got uh, folks that, that have cancer and, and just different things going on. And, and, um, and we need the body of Christ to, to stay together and pray for each other. And so lots of things going on. And, um, but I want to say thank you from your pastor's heart to you. Thank you for reaching out to each other, to loving on each other, finding out. Amen. I give you permission. When someone's not there, they usually sit in front of you. Hunt them down. Well, hallelujah. Oh, I got three people laughing. Amen. Call them up. Say, you weren't sitting in front of me. If they say they sit on the other side of the building, that's all right too. But amen. Love on each other. Find out where everybody's at, and, and, and you do that, and I want to say thank you. Amen. Yesterday, we had the uh, homegoing service, our, our celebration of life service for the true love who passed away this last uh, week, uh, week before, and uh, we've had uh, his service yesterday, and I want to say thank you, amen, for the church, for your, just your kindness and your love and uh, reaching out to that family. I want to give a shout out before we get into the word of the Lord. I know I've got you standing. I'll let you sit in just a moment, I promise. But I want to say to our media team, um, I, I want to, matter of fact, I tell you what, you can be seated. How about that? You be seated. Media team, stand to your feet. All the media, would you stand? If you're, if you're not back in the booth, but you're a part of our media team, would you stand across the sanctuary? Uh, we got some folks. Amen, Sister Sarah. I want you to give these folks right here a great round of applause. Thank you. You can be seated. I know we've got some more that, that are serving in our Sunday school, and they do multiple things, so they're not in here. Amen. But I want to just say I am so Holy Ghost proud of our team. Amen. Just coming in and... And making things happen and doing things. And I am so appreciative of that. And then all of those who, who are part of, of making food and serving all the families. We've had, we've had several uh, of our church family pass away in the last year or so that I've been here. And uh, our, our families that, that pitch in and make dinners and things like that. If you, Sister Vicki, thank you so much for helping with that yesterday. We appreciate that so much. But if you are a part of helping serve food, we want to say thank you so much for leaning in in a time where families are just trying to focus on grief and, and just trying to figure out why in the world did this happen, why now. And uh, if you've lost somebody, you understand how it is when you're not thinking about food at the moment you're just trying to understand the questions of why and what's next and and I want to say thank you so much uh, to our church that just I mean you just gather together you you serve food and uh, we were talking with the family yesterday and uh, I mentioned to them that food is on its way we're bringing some food to the family at the house and and they said we've got a lot of folks and I'm going to tell you what I didn't even bat an eye 
I, I, I knew in my mind there's going to be so much food, there will probably be leftovers till Jesus comes. And if you don't know this church, then you don't get that. But if you know very well, you understand. Our church don't do things halfway. And when we serve food, you're going to get enough food to serve a neighborhood. Amen. And I just want to say that's awesome. So thank you so much. If you are new to our church, I want to tell you what, you are in a great church. <laughs> you're in a great church. Amen. And, uh, and if, you're, if you're new, I don't know if, I don't want to do this. Amen. I got to get to preaching. But, uh, but, but if you're new to this church, and, and, and I would say less than six months or a year, something like that, um, you, you, just, you just hold on. You're about to, if you haven't already, you're about to discover that you are amongst some of the most precious, special people in God's kingdom. And they are the most giving people. I mean, they'll give the shirt off their back and, and, and then some. And, um, and I appreciate that. And I get to pastor you. Amen. Somebody should have said praise the Lord right there or something. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Rosie, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I get the awesome privilege of being your pastor. Amen. Let's move on. Praise God. Judges chapter 14. Y'all get enough of me stepping on your toe. Amen. Enjoy some good kudos every once in a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Y'all knew it was coming. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're awesome. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I'm pretty awesome too. Yeah, see, y'all were waiting a long time to say that part. Amen, amen. You're sitting next to some great people. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 14, verse number 5. Anybody still stuffed? Y'all all did good then. Hallelujah, praise God. Judges chapter 14, verse number 5 through 6. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. I want to focus on verse number 5 again. He came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. A young lion roared against him. I want to preach to us this morning on the simple subject here, honey from a strange hive. Honey from a strange hive. Honey from a strange hive. Let's pray and you can be seated. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for everything that you're doing in this place. What a wonderful spirit of the Lord that's in this house. And we just feel miracles, signs, and wonders are possible today. We ask, God, that your word would go forth and the hearers would become doers of this word this morning. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing this morning. I, um, I will confess that today's message is um, quite different than how I typically get messages. I don't want to bore you this morning on pastor's process. Amen. It is by no means uh, elaborate and it is not uh, anything that will excite you at all how I get messages and how I prepare. It is probably one of the most tedious, boring things I do in ministry is just sitting and putting things together. It's not that exciting outside of just it's the word of God. And, uh, but this message today was really born out of my preparation for the funeral service for Brother True Love as I began to, to look at uh, a message to speak at his funeral. I could not get away from this passage of scripture. It kind of just, it just got me this past week over Thanksgiving and, and uh, I just, I couldn't, get, I couldn't get away from it. And so as I began to prepare for what the Lord would have us to say, because even at a funeral message I want to make sure that I'm being sensitive what the Lord is wanting to speak even at a funeral service. And so as I dove into this, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't shake it. And, and it just kept getting on me. And so I, I will admit I have never preached a message born from a funeral service. I assure you that, that it will not be sad today. Um, but this will be a word of encouragement for us. Uh, Judges chapter 14 uh, tells us the story of Samson. And we are all well familiar of this man in the Bible. Most people in the church 
uh, know of the stories and the accolades and the the uh, the the grandiose and the the bigness of of Samson. He was bigger than life and. And we know that in most people outside of the church, if you say Samson, I would say most, if not some, of the church, of the world understands who Samson is. And so it is here that, that we see Samson, this, this mighty man. Uh, we know of his supernatural strength. Most of us, when we talk about Samson, we, we know of his great strength and his power that God gave him. We know of his vow to be a Nazarite unto God. We know that in the scripture that it says from his birth all the way in his entire life he made a vow unto God that is called a vow unto God a Nazarite vow and there were certain things that he had to do as a a man who took a vow unto God we have heard of his battle with the Philistines those famous battles when he took the jawbone of a donkey and with this jawbone that he found lying around upon the ground the Bible says that with this and that supernatural strength he killed a thousand Philistines with just simply the power of God his strength and a jawbone of a donkey and then we know about the time that he went into Gaza that city and with that strength and that power he grabbed a hold of the gates of the city and he ripped the gates from its foundation ripped them off the hinges and with that powerful strength that God gave him he displayed that against the enemies of God he carried the gates that's powerful isn't it we know about that awesome powerful story and of course how can we forget about Delilah how can we forget about this powerful story of Samson and Delilah and his love for her we know this he was deceived by her and we're not going to go into that story today but she deceived him wanting to know where did his strength lie where did he get his great power and of course we know that he, he tells her different stories and none of them worked and the enemies came in and they tried to bound, bind him but, but it would not happen. And so we know that through his blindness in his love and that is a completely story that I could dive in for a while but we won't. He was deceived by her and he told her where his great strength lied and so she took that information and she gave it to the enemies of God and they came in, they bound him, they put out his eyes, and they put him upon the meal press, and they they put him in chains, and we know the story ends with him standing before thousands upon thousands of the enemies of God, and in that moment of repentance, he says, God, if you'll give me your strength again, and we know that his strength came back to him, and between those pillars with that mighty strength, he presses those pillars, and the, the roof caves in and kills all of the people there. We're, we're very familiar with these stories the end of all of this is a display of the power of God. But of all of these great stories, and they are great stories, I think there is one that can bring strength to us all today. In our opening passage, Samson comes to the vineyards of Timnath. And in this, he is attacked by a lion. And I want us to see this story because while we can gain things from what Samson did with Delilah and that is a powerful message that can be preached and while we can talk about being redeemed back into a great standing with God after you have fallen away with those placed between the pillars and the strength returns back to him that would be a great message to preach. It is in this story here where the lion attacks Samson that I think today we're going to find some strength because I don't really know where you are today and I don't know what you're dealing with and what you're battling but I want you to know on the onset of today's message that you have a God who knows absolutely where you are and it doesn't matter what you're facing and it doesn't matter what you're going through your God is able and he is capable of bringing you out of anything that you're facing this morning somebody say amen and so it is that a lion attacks him. The Bible tells us that the Spirit of God comes on him and he destroys 
this lion. I think it's particularly funny that the Bible says he destroyed the lion like as it was a kid or a goat, as if killing a goat with your bare hands is a simple thing. But that's where Samson was. And so the Bible tells us that Samson, after he is attacked by this lion, uh, after he is attacked by, by uh, this, this lion, he kills the lion, leaves the lion laying upon the ground on the side of the road. He goes into the city there of Timnath and he, he looks and he finds a woman that is pleasing to his eyes and he begins to talk to this woman. And, and of course, uh, I'll try to stay on topic because this, this area passage has so much application to where we are. And so there he is. He is in conversation with this woman he is he has fallen fast for this woman the Bible says that he leaves that place and goes back home and some time passes and he decides I'm going to go back to that city and I'm going to see her again and so it is in Judges chapter 14 verse 8 that we pick back up in the story some time between when the lion attacked some time between when he with the strength of God he destroyed the lion he finds himself back again on his journey. And after a time, he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. Now I want you to picture this. He has returned back to this to see this woman. And as he is walking along the same journey, he comes back to the place where he had that fight. He comes back to the place where he had that battle. And there is the carcass of the lion that he had killed. That great fight, that great battle. He sees the carcass of the lion. And I want you to notice what is there now in the carcass of the lion. For the Bible tells us, and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and his mother and he gave to them and they did eat. But he told them not that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Uh, he, he comes to the carcass. He, he comes to the place where he fought before. And there in the carcass of the lion, he finds a swarm of bees. And inside the carcass, there are these bees that are creating honey. There is in this carcass honey. And the Bible says that he reaches into the lion and with his hand, he pulls out the honey, the sweetness of the honey, and he partakes of the honey and then he goes to his family and he tells them here is some honey to enrich you, to, to give you nutrients and here it is and I want you to see this this morning that out of the lion out of the carcass of that fight came a sweetness it came honey and I want to say to us today that there are things that we battle there are things that we go through there are struggles in life that we, we deal with and we wonder to ourselves why are we going through this and what is going on with this and we scratch our heads and we, we think to ourselves what is this all about and can anything good come out of this will I come out of this Will I get out of this? But I want to say to us today that even in the strangest battles and even in the things that make no sense in your life, I want you to understand when you're walking with God, there can become honey out of the strangest places. And I want us to see this. I want you to notice that honey came out of the lion. The lion was not the blessing. The honey was. The honey came out of the lion. The blessing is what will come out of this. In other words, the struggle and the thing that you're going through, maybe it's a doctor's report, maybe it's some chaos in your family, maybe there's just things around you, they're just not in place and you're fighting and you're battling and you're wondering what's going on. I want to let you know that the blessing is not what you're dealing with, the blessing is what's gonna come out of that. God knows where you are, God knows what you're dealing with and I want you to be encouraged this morning that you may not see it, you 
You may not know what's happening, but there is honey in that battle. There is honey in that carcass. There is something sweet that is going to come out of that. You're going to be blessed in the midst of the trouble. Somebody say amen. You're saying, Brother Winslow, I just don't know how God's going to do this. I don't see how any good can come out of this. you got to trust God and know that there's going to be honey in the middle of the battle. I don't know how God's going to do it, but I look at my troubles and I look at them like Samson did. I look at that fight and that battle and I wonder what in the world was going on with that. But I think to myself, at some point, notice the honey didn't show up the first day he fought. It was some time later that he returned again and there was honey. I'm telling you, be patient. Trust in God. Keep walking with God. Keep your hand in God. Keep loving God. Keep faithful to God. Sooner or later the battle's gonna shift and the battle's gonna turn and the fight's gonna turn and instead of there being a roaring lion you're gonna find sweetness and you're gonna find honey in the fight turn to somebody and say I can smell honey glory to God That means when I look at my troubles and I look at the stuff in my life and I think I'm right there with you. I got things that I'm sitting there going, what in the world was that about? Anybody ever said that before? Anybody ever had something happen and you stop and look at somebody and go, what in the world was that all about? Right? I mean, I've had things happen. We're still looking for things. that We we still have carcasses that we fought in battles, and we're still waiting for the honey. But I'm going to tell you something. Brother Winslow knows one thing. There's going to come a day that I'm going to walk back to that place where I used to fight, and God's going to say, take a big whiff. Can you you smell that? That's the smell of honey. In other words, that's the smell of my blessings. That's the smell of me bringing you out of things. Somebody say amen. You may not see it now. But there is honey in the carcass. Genesis chapter 50, verse number 18. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for, I, for am I in the place of God. Now I want you to see this verse here. Because I want you to understand, if you can look at every battle as the potential for honey, if you look at every fight that you're going through, as the potential for sweetness to come out of it. If you'll not look at things you're going through and say nothing good can come out of this and I'll never get through this. If you can just say, I don't know when, I don't know how, but something good's going to come out of this. God's going to have victory. I'm going to have victory. I'm going to have a breakthrough. Listen, if you'll do that, you'll find the honey in everything. I want you to see this. Verse number 20, but as for you, you thought evil against me. I want you to get this this morning. Joseph is sold into slavery from his family. Family betrayed him, sells him into slavery. And we don't have time to go through all of it, but I'm going to tell you, everything that he went through, if you look at it, it, it's enough to want to give up, isn't it? He gets sold into slavery after God gives him a dream of what God's going to do in his life. And his family uh, uh, gives him away into slavery. He goes into Potiphar's house and then all of the betrayal. And then there's the dungeon. And then there's the palace. And then all these things begin to happen. And then he's left in the dungeon and and they forget about him. And he's had dreams. And all, all these different things are going on. And I want you to notice something this morning. He's standing here facing his brothers who had betrayed him and they are knowing that what they've done is wrong and I want you to see what he tells them. His response is the honey in the carcass. His response to them is the honey in the carcass. He says, but for as you, you thought evil against me. You are the lion on my journey. You are the lion that approached me, wanting to kill me, wanting to destroy me. You wanted to end my life. You thought that this would be the end of me. But watch what he says. But God meant it unto good. But he doesn't stop there. He tells us what was the honey. Because this is what God says. He says to bring to pass as it is in this day the saving of much 
people alive. Can I tell you that those that were betraying him was a lion, but the honey was God was saying, I'm going to save a nation that in a drought would die. But if you'll trust me, Joseph, if you'll just hold on to me and trust me, honey's going to come out of this. I'm telling you this morning, I don't know what it is you're going through, and I don't know what it is you're dealing with, but if you'll trust God and say, God, I'm giving you everything. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why it's unfolding like this, but I know in the end, honey is going to come out of what I'm going through. I know right now some of you are thinking, I just don't see how in the world honey can come out of what I'm going through. But listen to me. Samson had no idea that one day he would be fed from the very thing he fought. He had no idea that the very thing that stopped him on his journey would be the very thing that he found sweetness in. And I know you don't see it now because Brother Winslow's there with things too. I don't see honey. I don't see anything happening. I don't see anything. And I'm thinking, okay, God, I, I have this line that I fought and this line that I fought and this line here. And I'm wondering, okay, God, but I just know sooner or later something's going to happen. Sooner or later God's going to bring us out of some things. Somebody say amen. Joseph tells his brothers that what they did, they thought was to destroy him. Their intention was to kill him. But God said, no, I'm going to bring honey out of this. I'm going to bring honey out of this. I don't care what it is that's trying to destroy you. God can make honey out of it. Amen. I don't care what anybody said about you. God can bring honey out of it. I'm going to say it again for somebody. I don't care what anybody said about you. I don't care the labels they placed on you. I don't care the kind of chaos they're trying to create. God can bring honey out of that situation. Hallelujah. The betrayal of Joseph's brother was the lion. and The honey was the saving of a nation. Out of the trouble came a victory. You need to look at your troubles. You need to look at your issues. And you need to say, honey's going to come out of this. Honey's going to come out of this. I know it doesn't look like it, but honey's coming out of this. Why honey? I thought this was amazing. Why honey? You know, I mean, God can do anything, can he? Why honey? Why, why is it that when he came back, he, he found honey in the, the carcass? Why, why, not, why not a loaf of bread? Or why not, uh, uh, you know, something else? Why, why, why honey? Honey appears over 60 times in your Bible. And of these times that the Bible talks about honey, it often represents something about God. And it is here also that we see something about God. When you read about honey, it's, it's, it often is a description of your God, how he works, what he does. We see this in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. And I came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, watch this now, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. He said, when I rescue you, when I bring you out, I'm going to put you into a place where there's milk and honey. Here, honey represents God's rescue. Honey represents that God's ability to reach in and pull out. What he was saying is, when you taste of that honey, I want you to know that as you taste that honey, I want you to think about how good I am and how it is I who brought you out. That's why Brother Winslow's telling you that there may be some dead carcasses and there may be some battles and some fights and some things that you're going through, but you just hold on. Honey's coming. Why? Because God is going to demonstrate to you his ability to rescue you and bring you out and set you in to where you need to be. Somebody say, I'm coming out. He rescued Israel out of Egypt and then he sent them to a land of honey. He took them out of bondage and then he sent them into a land of honey. He was saying, hold on, honey's coming. Hold on, sweetness is coming out of this. Because I'm a God that can rescue. 
And so we see that the first time in the Bible that we encounter honey is used as a gift. We see this in Genesis chapter 43, verse 11. We see the first time that honey is mentioned. It's mentioned as a gift, something given to somebody, given as somebody. And there, Father Israel said unto them, if it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits of the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds. So here we see the first time that honey's mentioned, it's mentioned as a gift given to somebody. But when God gives honey, it's not to find favor with us, it's simply to bless us. Here, honey is given as an exchange. But when God gives honey, it's him simply saying, I don't want anything in return, I just simply want to bless you. I just simply want to give to you. We see this in Exodus chapter 16, verse 31. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. Would you say manna? And it was like coriander seed. Now hold on a second. This here is where God is supernaturally supplying the needs of his people. They are in the middle of nowhere and they're wondering how are we going to survive this? How are we going to live? How are we going to do anything? How are we going to get through this? We're going to starve to death. And so God supernaturally provides a meal and they call this meal manna. How many ever heard of manna? Manna. I want you to see this. And it was like coroner seed, white. Now watch this. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Now listen to me. God don't do anything by mistake and there's nothing in his word there by mistake. Everything's intentionally there. There's a reason why it's honey and not that it tastes like fruit or it tastes like a banana or it tastes like an apple or because all those would have been great. But there's a reason why he said the manna tasted like honey. I want you to see this now. They called it manna, which means what is that? You ever had something like that at Thanksgiving (laughs) and looked to someone and said, what is that? (laughs) Y'all y'all are so scared to look around at anybody right now. You're like just straight ahead. Don't don't turn to look at nobody. But anywhere, I mean in a buffet, you ever looked at something and you're looking at it going, what is that? That's, that's what they called this, this, this gift from God. They called it manna, which means what is that? In other words, they didn't know what it was. They, they couldn't explain it. They just got this supernatural meal, and they don't know what it is, so they say, what is that? I don't know what it is, so we'll call it manna, meaning what is that? And, and, and I, think it's, I think it's amazing. They didn't know what it was, but they know what it tasted like. They, they, didn't, they couldn't explain what it is, but they could tell you what it tastes like. And I'm telling you, I can't explain how things work out with God. And I can't explain what it is. And if you say, Brother Winslow, how am I going to get this? And how's God going to do this? I I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what it is. But I can tell you what it's going to taste like. It's going to taste like honey. I don't know how God's going to do this. I don't know how God's going to bring you out. I don't know how God's going to save your family. I don't know how God's going to bring us revival. I don't know how God's going to do all these things. I just know that it's going to taste sweet. I just know that in the end it's going to be all right. I can't tell you what's the ingredients, but it tastes like honey. And I've come to tell somebody in this house, I don't have a 10-step plan for you of how you're going to get out. I just know that you're coming out and God's going to get the victory. So you need to look at your trouble and say, I can't figure this one out, but I can taste honey. I can't figure out how my husband is going to be saved, but I can taste honey. In other words, something's coming out of this, and I'm going to encourage you this morning. I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know how God's going to break you out. I don't know how God's going to. I would love to tell you, come on, stand in front of me. I'll give you 50 words of how God's going to do it, and everybody get in line, and we're going to work this out. And when you leave today, everything's going to be figured out. Well, wouldn't that be great? Well, if that was the case, you wouldn't need God. You just need Brother Winslow. Huh? Listen to me. 
The reason why we need God is because he's the only source of the honey. Amen. And there's reasons why we go through what we go through. Because listen to me, if Brother Winslow can get you out, guess who's getting his picture taken? Huh? If your husband can get you out of some things, guess who's getting the picture taken? Yeah. See, if we, if, if we can fix all our problems, if we can fix everything, what's the need of God? And let me say this to somebody. God will never bless you beyond the point of him being relevant to you. He is never going to bless us to the point we don't need him. We're always going to be in a position somewhere in our life that we need his mighty hand. And I think it's because God wanted to show Samson that your victory while you killed the lion, the sweetness And the victory and what I do in that is all mine. You fight, but I produce the honey. You fight, but I produce the honey. What am I saying? You pray, but God's going to produce the miracle. Yeah, you you can pray, you can shout, you can fast, but it's God who's going to produce the blessing. Somebody say amen. Let's stand to our feet. They didn't know what it was, so they called it manna, but they knew that it tasted like honey. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it tasted like honey. I think honey represents God's blessings. Honey represented God's rescue, and honey represents God's blessings. God was saying, I'm a God that blesses. I'm a God that not only can bring you out, but I'm a God that can put you in. I'm not just a God that will bring you out of things. That's rescue. But I'm a God that can put you into something. That's blessings. That's why the Bible says I am blessed going in and I am blessed coming out. In other words, it don't matter how this thing works, God's going to bless me. I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, we are a blessed people. And God's favor is for us. And God wants to continue to bless. If you know somebody in this church or sitting next to you or or anywhere that tell you it is not God's will to bless you, that poverty is God's way, you need to walk away. (laughs) It is God's great pleasure to bless us. Now, does that mean that you're going to get everything you want? No. Does that mean that life's not going to knock on your door and you're going to go through something? You're going to go through stuff. Does that mean you're going to get every, every car you pass by and say, I want that? No. Listen, God did down a cross to make you a millionaire. Come on, somebody. He died on the cross to forgive your sins. But he loves us enough that he wants to bless us too. We are a blessed people. And it doesn't matter what I go through. God's going to bless me. I'm telling you, God's going to bless me. You need to flip the script. And you need to stop looking at the struggle, the lion, and thinking this thing is going to be our end. You need to start looking at it as this is God giving me an opportunity to taste some honey. Are you hearing me today? But Brother Winslow, that don't make no sense. I'm telling you, if you'll trust God, we're not going to do it, but we could pass this microphone around. And how many of you can test This is true. That when I looked at things that I thought would destroy me, I looked back and there was something that God did. Whether in me, around me, through me, but there was something wonderful that came out of it. There was honey in it. Listen to me, some of us, maybe you're new to this church. Maybe you're new to Pentecost. Maybe you're new to Jesus. Maybe you're new to God. Maybe you're new to all of this. Listen to me, I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. You you are now being introduced to a God that loves you and cares about everything that you're going through. Everything. You say, I don't know about that. Yes, he does. If the Bible says he knows how many hairs are upon your head. and For some of us, that's not much of a challenge. Amen. But if he knows every hair on your head, (laughs) and he knows how many stars are in the sky, he knows exactly where you are. And I'm telling somebody, 
Honey can be found in the harshest places. Something interesting about honey. Honey is the only natural, edible product that consists of all the substances necessary to sustain life. It's the only one. There is nothing else in nature that produces something that within it contains everything you need to live. Only honey. You think it's God's mistake that he chose honey in the carcass? You think God didn't know what he was doing when he said, I'll send you to a land of milk and honey? You think, you think that is, God is just, it tastes good? God knew, and now scientists are figuring it out, that honey has everything you need. If you find honey, it has everything you need to sustain life. And then another interesting thing about honey, y'all didn't know you are getting a honey you know, breakdown today, did you? You know something else interesting? You can bottle honey. How many people bottle stuff in the house? Am I even saying it right? Jarring? Is that, is that the phrase? Bar, bottling? How many do that in the house? Man, I, y'all are either not participating today or we got like three people, the only people in Shelby County that do this. Anybody do that? Now, don't raise your hand now. He's like, well, he's going to make me do it now. <laughs> they say you put honey in a jar and you seal that. And if it's sealed, completely sealed, it'll last a lifetime, that honey. Isn't it amazing? It has staying power. Listen to me. God knows what he's doing, church. God knows why he made honey taste, or manna taste like honey. What he was trying to say is, I don't care what it looks like. Out of this, I'm going to give you something that will sustain you. And in this, you're going to find everything you need for life. See, the devil told you you're going to die in this. God says, uh-uh, honey's in the way. Honey's coming. In other words, I'm going to sustain you. I am going to give you everything you need. God was saying, listen, God was saying, why does honey? Now, I know the Bible doesn't directly say God is honey and honey is God. But it's saying that God is like honey because he's saying, I will sustain you and I am everything you need. In me is everything you need to sustain life. And I am telling us today, I don't know what it is, but if you have the faith, hear me, if you've got faith to say, God, in the middle of this, I'm going to trust you that honey is going to come out of this. Something good's coming. You're going to bless me in this. I will stand in a place of victory. Everybody doubts and everybody says no, but I know, God, you're going to do a great thing. I want us, if we can all gather together at the closing of this service, would you join us in the front today? I would like for us to join together. Hallelujah. I'm telling us today, look for the honey. Look for the things in your life that the enemy says nothing good can come of it. So what do you do? 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 tells us this. In everything, give thanks. In some things, in everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want you to see this because I've heard people say, give thanks for everything. It didn't say give thanks for everything. It said give thanks in everything. You don't give thanks for your broke down car. I've heard people say, I get out and say, thank you, that, thank you, God, my car blew up. I ain't doing that. You go ahead. <laughs> what it says is don't thank God for your battle. Don't say, I thank you, God, my boss fired me. Thank you. It's simply saying in everything, give thanks. In other words, if I'm going through a fight and I'm going through a battle, I'm not thankful for the battle, but in that, in the middle of it, I lift up my head and I give God thanks because he's good. I thank him for who he is in the battle. Not for the battle, in the battle. In everything. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Get alone. Lift up your hands and say, I thank you, God. What are you thanking for? This is what you thank for. I thank you because honey's on the way. That's what you do. You lift those hands up and you say, God, I don't know what's going on in my health. 
I don't know what's going on in my marriage. I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know what's going on in my finances. But in the middle of this, I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm simply going to thank you because, God, I know you're going to bring something good out of this. I know I'm coming out of this. You give thanks in everything. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. How do you do it? You don't look at everything around you. You walk by faith. The opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is sight. The opposite of faith is what you see with these eyes. That's the opposite of faith. Get your eyes off of what you see. Get your eyes off of what you're reading. And say, okay, God, I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to walk by faith. I can't understand why I'm going through this. But I'm going to trust you that one day I'm going to take, do you smell that? It's the smell of honey. Something's changing. Something's shifting. I want you to lift up your hands across this place. I don't know what it is you're dealing with this morning. Your neighbor may not know what you're dealing with this morning. They may not have a clue of what you're battling. They may not know that you fought a lion on the way to church this morning. They may not know that all week you fought a lion. All week you fought something. They don't know that 2023 has been a consistent battle with a lion. Week after week you fought and you fought. But I want to encourage you if you'll have faith this morning, if you'll listen to your pastor this morning, I want to encourage you if you can lift up those hands and if you can talk to the Lord this morning, I want to encourage you that honey is coming. There's going to be something that God changes and God shifts and the thing you've been fighting is not going to be there anymore. Instead, you're going to reach in with your hand and you're going to pull out something sweet. You're going to pull out something that sustains you. You're going to pull out life. Life in the thing that you think is going to destroy you. Come on, would you lift up your hand across this place? Whatever it is you're going through, why don't you talk to the Lord this morning? Why don't you give it to him? Why don't you say, I don't want to carry this anymore. I'm tired of fighting this lion. God, I need a little taste of honey. A little, I just need a taste of some honey. I'm struggling. I'm battling. And I'm fighting. And I need to know that there's honey at the end of this fight. Can we do that in this house this morning? In Jesus' name.